morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. And if you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi, doing my beautiful walk and talk again here on Phuket Beach early in the morning, guys. In today's video, guys, four amazing Bitcoin charts, really important charts now that we are at that 41, 42k level, guys. Yes, of course, a trading tip, also, of course, some travel advice, of course, talking a little bit about the news and a little bit live advice like normally guys let's quickly jump into the charts to explain to you what i see on the charts and if you're going to pull back now or if you're going to go up a little bit higher first enjoy the complete video guys bam time for the charts let's jump into the charts first a sip of coffee just coming back from the beach recording the charts now mm. Mm. In Bitcoin, we trust, guys. In Bitcoin, we trust. Now, let's quickly look at the charts. Bam, over here. First one, four-hour chart. Beautiful four-hour chart. We can see on the um, chart that we had a few buy signals. We already had a buy signal over here at 37. Then we had another buy signal over here, if you missed it, at 39. And you could have taken profit at the moment. There is not a sell signal yet. We do see there is a lot of resistance here, this blue area there on the top. So this is an area that we will have a lot of problems with breaking, but I do believe Bitcoin is very bullish to break. Now, if we read the charts, we can see a couple of things on the short term. We can see this bright green is decreasing. This is decreasing. We can see the white line that was going up and now is bending over, maybe even going down. The blue line is already crossing that white line. We do see the green on the back here also a little bit decreasing. So there will be somewhere a sell signal and that sell signal, then we need to wait for the confirmation for candle to close down below the yellow stepping line. So it's down below 41,150. If you close down below that level, then I believe we can see a pullback. If we don't below, uh, close below, down below that level, guys, I can still see us continuing like before, like this, and maybe one time up to 44K even here, and maybe even a week here to the, and then pull back to these levels. So there's a lot of bullishness in the charts, and for uh, our chart at least, I still don't see a retrace. I do see the RSI a little bit topping out, but yeah, let's see. So many things can happen to Bitcoin at the moment. The bull market is crazy as fuck. So you can't always depend just on TA because when people really get bullish and when certain news comes out, people will just buy and then uh, they will foam win and that will drive the prices even higher uh, than TA would expect them to go. Now, let's jump into some more amazing charts, guys, over here. This is the first one. Um, this is a very interesting one because this is the portfolio of El Salvador as a country. And as the country El Salvador, they now have 130,888,791.48 cents in total, guys. So at the moment, in total, they are in profit with 3.6 million US dollar. And we are just in the beginning of this bull market. I think El Salvador did the most smartest thing ever. And a lot of you think, ah, but they bought in so expensive, the dollar cost average at 40,000 and the price is now 41K. Yes, they did buy a little bit expensive, but they also bought the bottom. So the dollar cost average beautifully. They are on profit now. When Bitcoin goes back to these prices of 60K, 70K, 80K, their profit is going to be way bigger, guys. And don't forget, they're also mining Bitcoin with their volcanoes and everything else. So El Salvador is the first country that really does understand the Bitcoin standard and in my opinion is living the Bitcoin standard. Now, then we go to the next chart, this one. This is the halving progress. As you know, every four year cycle, we have halvings. And at the moment, we are now 90% towards the fourth halving. So. 90% towards the fourth halving. Now, just check in the previous bull markets what we did. Here we were also 90%. From that moment, 90% to here, the halving, the price went up. We can clearly see, maybe I can even draw on this chart. That's the advantage of now being behind the computer. We can clearly see that the price went up. Now, if we look here from the halving, we can clearly see we had a COVID crash, and then again, the price ended up around at halving higher than the moment where we are now 90%. So 
So this COVID crash, yes, it disrupted a little bit, but um, if we look very closely, we can also see that after the COVID crash, we ended up a little bit higher. Can I change the colors of my line? I should be able to, uh, yeah. No. So, very important. Now, we are now here, 90%. Are we going to go higher, 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 around 50K? Or are we going to see this beautiful uh, COVID crash again? I don't believe so. I do read some news nowadays, but, and then again, end up higher. So, it doesn't really matter. You just need to become, you just need to be buying Bitcoins at these levels, guys. I will figure out how to draw the lines next time, not in white, but in another color. I don't know why it didn't do that. I switched to black, it doesn't do it. Next chart, very interesting as well. Here, the blocks until that halving. Now we are zooming in a little bit. So here you can see that at the moment, it's still 21,000 blocks towards that halving, guys. Putting my face in the right place. So it's 21,000 blocks. So that means here, this amount of blocks, and we will be at the halving. So you see very clearly, you can see that COVID crash over there, but still we ended up here at this level, look, and that's higher than the level that we are now. So yes, I believe we will go higher and higher and higher, all the way between 40 and 50K, and end up there around that halving. And from that halving, if we go times four, maybe five, even less than these two peaks, if we go times four or five, 50K, that would be 250K. If you only go times three, that would be 150K. Still very beautiful prices. It's beautiful to see that these bottoms are always happening around the same amount of bot, uh, blocks and that the halvings, of course, yeah, every 210,000 blocks we have a halving, uh, but then we always move towards the halving up slowly. Beautiful chart, guys. And that was also the last chart for today, guys. Zoom out buy Bitcoin. I hope you really enjoyed the chart, guys. Yes, of course, charts always zooming out. Of course, in the short term, it's important to understand, could I sell a little bit of Bitcoin now at 42K, 41K? Will I be able to buy it back at 35K, 36K, 38K? You know, you can keep asking yourself these questions, but is this really the game that you want to play? Do you really want to be stressing out all the time about, ah, should I buy, should I sell? In the bull market, my ultimate advice would be, only dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. There's a dog only barking in front of me. Just dollar cost average into Bitcoin. Keep buying Bitcoin. Why would you be playing that doubtful game of buying, selling, not knowing exactly when to buy and when to sell? It's very difficult to play that game. So for me, the most simple thing that you can do is just buy Bitcoin. You know what the dog wants? Yeah. I'm walking around it. <laughs> Just buy Bitcoin, guys. It's very simple. All the way up to the halving in 2024, April, you should just be buying Bitcoin. Accumulate Bitcoin as much as you can. And maybe if you have time enough to read the charts, to do TA, yeah, then do the buying and the selling. But if you're just a normal person with a normal job, then don't try to guess the local tops and bottoms. That's going to get you completely wrecked. You're going to sell at the wrong moments and you're going to buy at the wrong moments. My advice, just keep buying Bitcoin all the way up to the halving and then chill, lean back and enjoy the bull run. The trading tip for today, guys. Yes, of course, again, a beautiful candlestick pattern. Today, we're going to talk about the spinning top. The spinning top, like you can see here in the image, is a candlestick. It has a very tiny bottom and two equal wicks to the top and to the bottom. It looks like a star, but this is what we call a spinning top. And the spinning top is telling us, ah, the bears and the bulls are fighting and they are equal in this fight. And we might find a local top or a local bottom and we might consolidate a little bit, but then there will be a breakout to the top or the bottom. So a spinning top is a very beautiful indication that is telling you, hey, watch out. Something is going to change into the market. Now let's look at the next candle, what is going to happen. Are we going to go up or are we going down? If you see a spinning top after this huge run, yes, probably we are going to down. If you sign a spinning top after this huge bear market, yes, probably we are going to reverse to the top side. So the spinning top is a beautiful candlestick that tells you a lot about the market, guys. And then we get to the travel tip for the day, guys. The travel tip for the day, very simple. Always try to travel off season. In peak season, 
the prices will also be peak prices. If you travel off season, the prices are also off season prices. So you will be able to travel way more cheaper, for example, in the months July, August and September to Thailand than, for example, December, January, February. December, January, February is peak season in Thailand. These are the most expensive months. And I've been here in Thailand as well in July, August, September. And you know what? Same beautiful weather, same amazing people, and same delicious food, but only the prices drop tremendously. And I'm talking about the flight prices, the price of houses, the price of everything drops in these off seasons. Same also in Bali, same all over the world, guys. Peak season is the most expensive season. So if you always focus with your trips on peak season, you will always be paying too much. That is why the centralized entities like governments want you guys to only be able to go on holiday during the peak season because that's making you even more poor why is this rule even there your kids go to school i understand it but why are they only allowed to go two weeks on holiday during that huge peak season because that is when the school is off shouldn't they like care for their people and give them the opportunity to go in pre-season off season to save a little bit and still have a beautiful life because they could go two weeks on a beautiful holiday to Spain. Spain in July, August, expensive. Portugal in July, August, expensive. May, equal beautiful weather, maybe even more beautiful weather, it is way cheaper. So I don't understand why governments don't allow people just to choose when to go on holidays for two weeks, guys. So that was a travel tip for today. Try to travel off season. That will save you a lot of bucks. And with that saved bucks, you can buy a shitload of Bitcoin. Beautiful. Then we arrived at the question for today, guys. There was a question of one of the followers. He was like, do you still believe that if all these big players are now coming to the market, like the banks and BlackRock and all the institutional investors because of the spot EDF, then in the future we will still see these massive drops in the bear market of like 80%. He was stating 80%. So I believe these drops are becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, we only saw like a 72% drop this time, the time before 74, the time before that like 80 almost. So. Uh, there is diminishing returns, so the returns on Bitcoin are also like not 1000% anymore or 5000%, they're like becoming smaller. And I think the same thing is happening to the, the, the dips. So I still believe there will be a bear market dip. 2026, 27, I think will be the bear market bottom. And I do believe that a drop will again be around 60 to 70%. So there is a decreasing drop, but the drop will still be there. And of course, it doesn't really matter anymore because, you know, if we go to a price of 150K, for example, and we would see like a 60% drop, that's like somewhere around 90,000 US dollar. So 150, then we arrive at a price of 60,000 US dollar per, in the bottom. If we only go to 100,000 US dollar per Bitcoin in this uh, bull market, and we will see a drop of 70K, then we even stay above 30,000 US dollar. So for me, guys, I do expect that, yes, these crashes that we see, the bear market crash, will always happen. Because it doesn't have only to do with the normal market. A market just can't go continue going upwards. There needs to be pullbacks now and then. And mostly, when the retail steps in in the end, and we see that huge blow of top in Bitcoin, there will be a moment that people start to take profit. Because a lot of people step into this market to take profit. So, there will be a moment they start to take profit. And when the most people start to take profit, we have this blow of top and everyone sees the price crashing and then everybody starts to sell, sell, sell more and more and more. Till there is no selling pressure anymore. And that is mostly when the market has crashed around 70%, then the selling pressure is gone. Then we start to go consolidate again, beautiful at a bear market bottom and go up from there again. So yes, my answer is, I believe the normal bear market crash will be there, but I don't believe it will be like 75%. I believe it will be somewhere around 68%, I think. So hopefully from 150K, then we will have a very beautiful bear market bottom in the future, and we all will be very happily walking here together on the beach, making videos, because I think, yes, this bull market is gonna create a shitload of millionaires out of you if you just have watched all my videos, sold your house on the correct time, bought a shitload of Bitcoins on the correct time, and now we're gonna take profit 
also on the correct time. You should subscribe to this channel to be notified for when you need to dollar cost average out, out of Bitcoin again near that bull market top because I'm going to share of course when I'm doing this and then you should probably copy my move as I have repeated this move now three times successful. Now let's jump into the next part. It's another beautiful morning here in Phuket. Wow, the sun starts to become very bright again. The skies are turning more blue. I think the rainy season is now completely over. So finally, we are going to go have some more beautiful beach days to these beautiful beaches where, of course, we'll be uh, making some more videos, guys. The news for today is about a Brazilian bank and not just a Brazilian bank, the biggest Brazilian bank out there. It's called Itaú. Unibanco. I don't know if I pronounce it well, but it's Carlo Fank Itaú Unibanco. And that's the biggest Brazilian bank. And they announced now that they are going to support cryptocurrency trading for their customers. Yes, they will be the custodial service. So not really your Bitcoin, but at least a shitload of Brazilian people will now be able through their bank account at Itaú Unibanco to buy some Bitcoins. And that is, of course, another shift in the positiveness from banks towards cryptocurrencies. And we can see this shift now all over the world. All over the world, banks want to become a custodial service for their clients when it comes to Bitcoin. And I want to make very clear to you guys that that is not really Bitcoin. When a bank holds your Bitcoin, you're not able to send your Bitcoins to someone else outside of the banking system. You're not able to withdraw those Bitcoins into your own wallet. You're only able to buy Bitcoin with your bank account and sell Bitcoins again into that shitcoin fiat. And I've told you now a lot of times already that fiat is that ultimate shitcoin that you still treat as your base capital while you should be trading Bitcoin as your base capital. So. Very positive news for Brazilian people out there now that want to buy Bitcoin very safely with their Unibanco and while they have the custodial service at their bank. And of course, I need to be positive because I think a lot of Brazilian people and also other people over the world still trust the banks tremendously. They are not like me. Uh, and they still feel a little bit safe by using the bank. So if those banks now will offer them to buy Bitcoins, at least they will be able to buy Bitcoins. The negative part, they can't use Bitcoins the way Bitcoin should be able to use. If they want to send Bitcoins from their bank account to a poor nephew on the other side of Brazil, they won't be allowed. The bank will tell them, first sell your Bitcoins into Brazil reals and then send those reals to your nephew. And that's exactly not what we want, because then again, the transaction can take hours or days or even weeks, maybe. That's exactly the opposite of cryptocurrency, where a transaction should be done in a couple of seconds up to a couple of minutes guys and that should be unstoppable when you have bitcoins on your bank and you want to send them somewhere one that's not possible two if it would be possible they would be able to stop you three fuck that <laughs> that's not what we want we want bitcoin freedom bitcoin in our self custodial wallets on which we can decide where we send it to who we send it when we send it how much we send in an unstoppable inconfiscatable way that is why we should have Bitcoin in our own wallets and not in a custodial service of a bank because that's not Bitcoin anymore. It is very important that you understand that the only way is to hold Bitcoin in your own self-custodial wallet, for example, a hardware wallet or a multi-sig software wallet, but then it's your Bitcoin, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. You should be able to send Bitcoins to whoever you want, receive Bitcoins from whoever you want, do that whenever you want and wherever you want all over the world, guys. Then, when you can do all those things, then it's your Bitcoin. And that's only the truth when you hold your own Bitcoin. Self-custody is number one when it comes to Bitcoin. Let's jump into the next part. And before I jump into the next part, guys, uh, I want to remind you that if you want to trade, please trade on Bybit. Bybit at the moment has a shitload of promotions going on because it's December. I think you're even able to win a Tesla at the moment if you use the link down below my video to sign up to Bybit. Of course, the normal bonus is always there. You can claim up to 30,000 US dollar in deposit bonuses, $30 for just signing up. 
But now that we near Christmas, they are going to do a shitload of other promotions. If you don't feel safe on a centralized exchange, then please use Apex Pro. Apex Pro is the best decentralized exchange there, also a little bit supported by Bybit. So yes, you can feel safe on that DEX because you only connect your own wallet to that exchange. Nobody is able to touch your Bitcoin but yourself. So if you ask me, where should I trade? There's two options, centralized exchange, Bybit, decentralized exchange, Apex Pro, the links are down below. Also Apex Pro, a lot of Xmas bonuses, guys. Now, that was a little promotion that I need to do, of course. Yes, I need to eat Thai food every day as well, and also now and then have a party. And these bottles are becoming more expensive and expensive. Inflation, so you should be using my links. Yeah, that's where I earn a little bit commission as well. No, no. Uh, the last part um, of the video, of course, inspirational part. The inspirational part of the day, uh, very simple, and you hear it a lot, you're never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. You're never too old to this. So if you're now at home and you're like me, 45 plus, maybe even 50 plus, and you're like, ah oh, man, I wish I would do the same. I would walk to the beach. I wish I would have so much fun with this or traveling or whatever it is. You're never too old to set a new goal or to dream a new dream. You're never too old. The only thing that gets too old is your mindset. Your mindset is fooling you that you're getting too old to do all these steps. But your body is still allowing you to move, to walk, to fly, to travel, to trade, to invest. It's just the mind that is blocking you. You should take control of your mind. And you should think, wow, this is just 50% of my life. Hey, let's go for the next 50% and let's change. Let's do the next 50% of my life in a different way. You're never too old to set new goals. This is going to be my new goal. Don't set that bar too low. Set that bar way too high. That even if you don't achieve that goal, you still end up very high. If you still need to run after your youth dream, then do it. If you're already past that phase and you already achieved all your youth dreams, dream bigger. Dream new dreams. Make those dreams come true. Age is nothing but a number. I'm still figuring out myself how people have convinced us that we are at a certain age. Who invented time? Who told us, ah, this is 24 hours? And who told us, uh, this is 30 days? And who told us, yeah, this is a month? I still don't understand that we have 12 months. We have 12 months, but we have 13 moon cycles. So where is that 13 month? I really don't understand. So for me, that number that you're all talking about as an age, that is not that important. It's just a number. And probably not even a correct number because 13 moon cycles, only 12 months, we should have one extra month, I think, every year, which would completely change your full age. <laughs> so just think about that. Just think about the whole aspect of time. Who invented that? Who said, ah, today, yes, uh, now it's Monday. And uh, yeah, tomorrow we call it Tuesday. Ah, and then uh, we do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ah, shit, I ran out of names. Let's do Monday again. <laughs> yeah, and then when we have like seven days, yeah, we call that one week. I don't know why, but we just call it a week. You know? And if you do like four of these weeks, ha, yeah, we are almost at a month. Sometimes two days more, sometimes one day less but it all depends on the moon cycles. You know, and because we have 13 moon cycles, we just take 12 months. <laughs> yeah, I still don't understand how this fucking happened. And then to make it a little bit more difficult in some countries like the Netherlands, ah, yeah, you know, and you know what? When it gets winter, ah, we change the clock. <laughs> it's one hour earlier or it's one hour later. Yes. <laughs> just imagine this guy walking on the beach and inventing time and just fooling the whole world. Ah, this is time, you know, and when you spend too much time, you know, too many weeks, too many months, there will be a moment you die and you go to heaven. Let's uh, say mostly it happens between 70 and 100 years <laughs> time. Maybe we are like 600 years, maybe we are like only five years at that moment. We don't know. I really don't understand how it's possible. Yes, I do understand a little bit, of course. I understand, I understand. It all comes from the concept of the moon. But if you have 13 moon cycles, how we can have 12 months? Then that whole system is not working anymore. 
sometimes in February we need to add an extra day <laughs> to make a correction. And then you now are at home thinking, I wish I had more time. I need to work till I'm 70. My time is over. I can't go and dream new dreams. I can't go and change life at the moment. And, I, and I'm just here to wake you up on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Wake up. You're never too old. You're never too old to set new goals. You're never too old to dream new dreams. You will always be possible to do that. As time, in my honest opinion, is something that some people invented. But it doesn't mean that you really need to train your mind. The older I get, the worse I get. Because, let's be honest, we really don't know how old we are. We don't know. Some people of 80 are still walking and running these beaches and going and driving mountain bikes all over the island because they just kept pushing and kept fit and kept eating well. They weren't like, ah, oh, now I'm 55 or 60, I can stop working, I go just lie in my hammock or sit on my rocking chair and do nothing anymore and let my body degenerate all the way till I'm dead. <laughs> That's not the concept. The concept is keep enjoying a life to the fullest. The concept is you're never too old to set new goals. You're never too old to stop dreaming. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. There was no booty in the video. Uh, maybe I was too early a little bit, but I still hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Let me know down below the video, what do you think about the charts? What do you think about all um, the other stuff I talked about, especially about time? What do you think about that story that I told you about? Do you agree with me or like Diddy? Just do normal, man. Of course, time is invented by someone that really understands why the time is invented and why we have 24 hours and we have like 365 days or 66 days, depending on the year, etc., etc., etc. Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing Tuesday and see you tomorrow on Wednesday again. Bam.